Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with Ruby Volume 9, Chapter 9. So, yeah. Last time got quite heated. Um, and I'm just gonna say right off the bat, my opinions have not changed. I still want the bitch dead. Um, I, I, I don't really think there's any, at this point, redemption for her. I just, I, I just don't see it at all. Um, killing Little was kind of like, it, it was that exact moment that it, it kind of proved that she's beyond that. Like, even if you want to, like, like, point out afterwards, it's like, oh, but then she realizes that that was literally the only thing she was working towards and it didn't fulfill her at all. It's like, who gives a shit? It's like, it, 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 it's very clear that she's irredeemable and needs to die. And, and again, there was really, there's really no way of making it work that she would come out of the ever after anyway. There, there's just no way of making that work. The idea I've heard some people float around as well of like her possibly redeeming herself and um, sacrificing herself in some degree to save the others or whatnot doesn't make any sense. It does not work. It would not work. She wouldn't do it. There's absolutely nothing that would cause her to have that big of a turn. Even if you want to say, like, oh, she realized that this didn't really give her any fulfillment, it's like she wouldn't make that big of a turn. She literally just drove this young girl to suicide. She literally drove a young girl to suicide after murdering a peaceful, caring, helpless, innocent creature. It's, it's like trying to redeem her at this point would just be bad writing, honestly. Um, and and the, the crew has only had one moment of bad writing in this series. And I, I just, I don't want another. <laughs> like, notably, a notable moment of bad writing. Because little tiny things here and there, I'm, I'm not counting. Um, but yeah, so now the real question is, how are we going to save Ruby? Because she's on her way to the tree and is going to be ascended or if ascension doesn't work for non-Afterans, we can assume death. And what is the cat planning to do with Neo's body? Why did the cat initially want rubies? And why is why are they now using Neo's? Like, we can assume they want to get out of there. But how do they plan to do that? Um, and, and, and I'm still hearing a lot of people, like, going about the bullshit of Yang being a bad sister and not like and not preventing this and shit and it, and it just it pisses me off so much the worst part is my sister even had said that and it's like when I pointed out to her that it's like Yang and the others have been checking on Ruby this entire time especially Yang and that Ruby just keeps pushing them away basically her response was she should have tried harder which is an absolutely fucking demented response. Like, my sister's usually, like, not that terrible <laughs> to say something like that. Um, I, I, I don't understand. But that's ab absolutely demented to say something like that. Anywho, anywho, um, there's two more episodes left, and unfortunately, the crew is added again, at least to a smaller degree, but still added again, 
with hyping up the last two episodes of the season. Specifically, they're hyping up the last one, not this one, but episode 10. And I, I saw most specifically uh, Barb's uh, tweet about it saying that uh, the last episode of the season is one of her favorites in the entire series and everything. And it's like, I really wish they wouldn't do this stuff. If you do it after the episode releases, that's fine. That's great. All good. But don't say this kind of stuff before the episode releases because, again, you're just building up this unobtainable height of expectation. And if it doesn't, if the episodes don't live up to that for people, they're going to be mad. They're going to be upset because you made it seem like it was going to be better than it, for them it was. That stuff just irritates me, okay? I just wish that the, the crew would not say anything about the episodes and their quality or, or their, their per, uh, perception of the quality until after the episodes come out I, it's just it's just i don't want those expectations put on me you know it just it it bothers me especially when it doesn't live up to the hype but like i don't know it's just it's annoying to put it simply but Hopefully, we still enjoy these last two episodes. Um, but as a note, I'm going to say this right off the bat, um, rather than in the just in the afterthoughts. Next week, uh, there's a convention I'm going to. It's a small convention. It's a single day one. Um, it's it's a free convention at a college. I've been I, I went there in 2018 and 2019. It's called LTU Expo. Uh, I even have. Uh, I have uh, cosplay music videos on the channel for it. Uh, it. It was originally known as LTU Anime Con, then it became LT, uh, LTU Expo. Uh, or I think it was LTU Anime Expo, but either way, it's just currently now known as LTU Expo or LTUX. Um, and it's the first time that we are having one since uh, 2019 because of the pandemic and everything having pushed it back. So I'm going to that next Saturday and I'm gonna be gone probably mostly all day. The thing is, I don't know. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get to Ruby. It's probably not gonna be until Sunday. I would say don't expect it until next Sunday. Um, and I will be doing a cosplay music video for uh, for this one too, just letting you know that ahead of time as well. But don't expect the cosplay or don't expect the uh, the Ruby episode until Sunday for next week, the final episode of the season. Um, but yeah, either way, we'll get to the penultimate episode now. I'm just, I'm wondering where this is going to go, how they're going to save her, how they're going to, like, what even is the truth with the tree? We don't even actually know that. So, yeah, gonna be interesting. But the cat being the final main villain, even above Neo this season, was a little bit of a surprise. Like, I expected the cat to be a villain, I just expected Neo to be the final one for the season. I thought Volume 9 was going to focus more on that. But instead, no, the cat is actually the villain. And mind you, like it, it, it became pretty damn obvious the cat was not to be trusted. Like, Jean was right about that. And I, I, I actually didn't doubt that. The cat seemed very shifty. And again, when they were, uh, when they were in the Punderstorm and uh, they had the argument and the cat left... The cat was gaslighting the shit out of them, out of out of Ruby, Weiss, and John. Like that that was very clear that the cat was not in the right there. The cat was being a piece of shit. 
Um, and, and, and obviously, Jean had some issues, too, and was clearly wrong about some things, too. But... <sighs> that doesn't mean the cat was automatically right. Both can be wrong. Both of them can be... Uh, can, can be negative in this regard. Um, and, and one last thing before we get this started. Someone had pointed out, I, I think on social media, um, that when you think about it, because of all the illusions that Neo had been showing to, to Ruby, like right when she was drinking the tea, when the real rest of Team Ruby and Jean came in, she probably thought those were illusions. She probably drank the tea, based, again, effectively committing suicide, not even believing that those were actually her family and friends right there. She, she thought she was still alone, that no one was there for her. And that just makes it ten times more depressing. Um... I'm, I'm just wondering, because even if they save her from the tree and everything, like, how are they going to help her? Because it, 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 that's clearly the bigger issue here. And we've got two episodes left to do that, as well as to get them home. It just feels like... <sighs> excuse me. That there's just so much more to go. And, and the problem is there's not... Like, this episode's, like, only, like, what, 15 minutes long? And unless the, unless the final episode's, like, notably longer, I just, I'm not sure how they're going to close all this out. I guess we'll see. Um, they're gonna have to, like, really get right on it, I guess. Um, but yeah, so let us get this going. So... When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So before anything, I want to touch on uh, Summer Rose's weapon um, because this is kind of a really cool detail for me. So we had never really seen Summer's weapon before. We, we really didn't know much of anything about that because I, I think in the picture of Team Stark, it really didn't show that. But I like that it's like this battle axe because, as I said in, at the end of the reaction, that sets ruby apart from her mother she's not just like a clone of her mother um so i like that that summer's weapon isn't isn't just kind of the same thing just with a slightly different color scheme or anything instead you can see that um summer's weapon um is also a, a sniper rifle and that's where that part of crescent rose comes from the scythe part comes from Crow. Meaning that Crescent Rose, when Ruby designed it, was inspired by both her mother and her uncle. This is a big deal. They were the two, two at least two of the biggest influences in her life. She got the sniper rifle from her mother. She got the 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 scythe from her uncle and combined them to make something her of her own. And I, I think that's really cool to see. I'm trying to see more on this wep uh, uh, on the weapon here. Yeah, it has the scopes and everything, and you can kind of see how it uh, changes its form. You can also see its size comparison to Summer in the, in the, in the end here. Um, but yeah, it shows, that, it shows that Ruby is not just a product of one source. She's a product from a lot of sources. Uh, she gets a lot 
personality and, and character wise from her father she gets a lot from her mother she gets a lot from her uncle from yang from so many different sources and that's realistic that's how people are we get a lot of who we are from various sources of inspiration from various sources of influence um, and some of those influences are going to be negative and we have to learn to prune those branches because when we do the tree will be more beautiful than ever hashtag metaphor as Andrea Davenport would say um Ruby's gonna come out of this. We know she is. She's the main fucking character of the series. Even more so than the rest of the team. Like, we know she's coming out of this. The question is, what exactly is going to help bring her out? What is going to be that defining thing that saves her? Because as she said, she's feeling just constantly heavy. Like, nothing matters. And again, having gone through heavy depression, I know exactly what that feels like. I know exactly how just utterly hopeless that feels. Not even painful, but hopeless. It's like the, the, the themes and ideas in this season around Ruby's depression and even suicide attempt, it is so powerful and very realistic. Like you see throughout this season that it's building, but you also see Ruby smile at a couple points. You see her uh, get excited or get intensely focused or go like on the offensive and stuff and, and it's like you see those pieces of the old ruby there but you also see that things are not going well and it's getting progressively worse and worse and and that's kind of, that that feels very realistic and i really like that and at the end just losing all, like the last little vestiges of hope that she had falling apart that heavily and being driven to suicide by an outside influence it's like yeah I, I've been there I again I know what that feels like and I know the amount of hopelessness going through it's not even pain she's not in pain it's it's beyond that she she faced her pain already she's at that point of just complete and utter hopelessness she has no desire to go on it's not pain anymore it's apathy and i know that was volume six but this is like legit human apathy she just doesn't care anymore and she needs to be saved from that. And Yang and the others have been trying to reach her. She kept pushing them away. She kept just ignoring their reaching out to help her. Because she herself was not crying out for help. Ruby was actively fighting against getting help this entire time. And if they had just pushed it, if Yang and the others had just continued to forcefully push it on Ruby, it, it would have made things worse. The way they checked in with her every now and again was the right thing to do. If they, if they had gone further, if they had gone too hard, it would have just made her, like, it, it would have pushed her into this stuff faster. And made things less feel like less hopeful than ever so i'm really really glad that they handled that well both the crew and the characters um and 
as was said, it's up to Ruby now. No one else can bring her out of this depression. No one else can make her feel better. That's not how that works. She has to... She has to acknowledge this apathy. She has to acknowledge this depression. And she has to work to overcome it. It's up to her and her alone. And that sounds bad when you're comparing to real life depression and stuff because a lot of times it's not it's not that simple it's not that easy to just overcome you can't just like say like oh i'm going to overcome this now and like that it happens no obviously in real life it's a lot more complicated and takes a lot more effort and a lot more time and sometimes people aren't able to get over it and unfortunately they don't save themselves and the thing is there's nothing wrong with people wanting to help and you should pay attention to and help and look out for and again like reach out to them but after a point you also need to let them figure things out for themselves you you, you have to have both and obviously this is a weird magical situation that makes things more complicated but yeah it's just I, I just really like how they're doing this as someone who's went through this I like how they're doing this and Yang and the others like just instantly working to find her it's like yeah they're not going to give up <laughs> excuse me they're not going to give up they're not going to like stop trying to save her um and along the way they even get to help sean out a bit they go back to where the paper pleasers were and find that they've been reborn we now know for absolute certain that the ascension is real and they don't have their old memories but the genial gems have found new purpose and that's awesome they're better than they were they're they're new and improved obviously as gemstones now they're harder to to kill they have magical powers but their purpose still seems to mostly be the same to beautify the land to make things better. And this allows the others to help Sean, and especially Weiss, which, as I said in the reaction, is so fitting, it's so beautifully fitting, considering where their relationship started in Volume 1 and, and everything. So to see Weiss being the one to help him there, the first one to hug him, and to mean it so genuinely, like that hug was excessively genuine. It was so beautiful. It's like we can see how far they've come. We see that, yeah, she may still find him a little annoying at times, but she loves him. Not romantically, but she still loves him just like she loves everyone else all of her other friends they mean so much to her and she's she's going to work to to do everything she can for them like we we've known this honestly since volumes four and five especially five when uh when Weiss reunited with Yang and just jumped into her arms to hug her because she was so happy to see her again. When she, when they reunited with everyone else and they uh, invited her into their family hug because she's family too. It's like, this is, this is why Weiss is my favorite character. Let's be honest. Um, and we saw both shades of Weiss, pun intended. 
in this volume we this volume we saw Weiss kind of being a bitch again early in the volume she was kind of being kind of a dick in some ways and not being as uh as understanding as she should have been it's not even early in the volume just a couple episodes back when they first met the paper pleasers and all like ruby didn't have her weapon and she's like Where, where's your weapon and everything and then ruby's like oh i, I i'm still waking up i'll, I'll go get it and, and weiss basically yells at her she's like come on we gotta go basically telling her to get her head in the game and everything like Weiss was honestly the worst to Ruby in this volume. People who are attacking Yang, like, what the fuck are you on to think that Yang is the one to be, to go against? Weiss has been a bit actively aggressive. Not, not intentionally and definitely not, uh, like, purposely to be mean. It's just, it's Weiss. She has that bit of a rough edge to her. But then we see again here with her helping Jean, and it's like, and you see again multiple times throughout the volume her being there, and you see her reaction to everything that had happened back in Atlas at the end of last volume. It's like you get to see both sides of Weiss again, both shades <laughs> in the in this volume, and I love that. I, I haven't done enough praising of Weiss this volume. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to do so here because it's like her character continues to develop. Just because she's a very different person now than when she started doesn't mean her development's over. It just means that she's continuing on. And again, that's very real. People continue to change. They don't reach a, a point and just stop developing as people. That's not how that works. They reach a certain point where it's like, oh yeah, I'm excessively different from where I was five, ten years ago, but I have to keep going to make sure I continue to improve, to continue to be better than I was. And Weiss is a very good example of that here. We also learn a lot more about things, about Alex and her brother. We find out that Lewis is the one who went home. That there was the there were theories on on which of them actually were the one was the one to make it home, what happened to the other one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We find out that Lewis did make a home. Alex chose to stay because she wanted to right all her wrongs. She had this moment of conscience at the end, and the cat took advantage of that. I don't know if he it, it's not entirely it's not entirely clear but i don't know if they tried to possess alex and go through the door with her i don't know if they just you know killed her per permanently somehow um I, I i thought the only way to do that was the jabberwalker maybe they fed her to the jabberwalker i guess that's possible or maybe they ascended her they forced her into ascension either way the cat is behind Alex, Alex not being around to any degree at the moment, or probably ever again. The cat is the true villain here. And now their plan with Neo hasn't even worked. They can't even get through the door because Neo has no attachments to the other world, apparently. I guess that's how that works. And they think that... Uh, that Ruby still does. And and she logically does, but at the same time, it's like she doesn't believe she does at this moment. She's with her hopelessness and all. So tearing her out of the wood, which it, is that even a thing you can do? I, I, I guess so. I mean, I, they would know. Uh, if they were to tear Ruby out of the wood as she is now, it wouldn't work. It, it wouldn't, nothing would come of it. I feel uh, they would still not be able to cross over um, 
And that's all assuming that it is because of Neo that they can't cross. What if they can't cross just because they're an after him? They just can't leave. That's a possibility, right? There's one more episode left. And I, I don't know exactly where it's going to go. But we see Ruby confused about what to do next. She doesn't know what to do at all. If she wants to stay herself, become someone else, die permanently, she doesn't know. And the... I guess the tree, maybe? Again, it's still a little unclear, a little confusing, but I guess like the blacksmith and the tree are kind of one and the same to some degree. Um, but they are telling Ruby that, like, you can become anyone you want, and this eventually leads Ruby to finding her mother's weapon, to realizing that it's her mother's weapon, and to reaching out to it. What would that do if she took her mother's weapon, though? W would that mean she'd become her mother? Or would she still be herself because that's the huntress her mother raised her to be when she was around? And there's a lot of questions, I feel. And I, I don't have the answers. I don't know how this is going to end. I feel like the last episode should be, I don't know if it's going to be, but I feel like it should be longer than the other ones this season just to really wrap things up. Like, obviously, it's not going to have, like, the perfect ending, because even if they go back, they're, you know, going to still have to deal with all that's going on out there. So it's going to just lead into something else. Um, I do hope there is a post-credits uh, stinger in this season, though, for the final episode. Um, and I do hope we end up getting the next volume uh, sometime this year, maybe early next year. Like, I, I, I don't want to wait over a year for the next one. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very excited to see how this ends. This was a really good episode, by the way. Again, from just the, uh, from Jean's acceptance of things to Ruby's questioning, the again, how the depression and, and, and suicide attempt is handled and everything, the cat giving some big reveals this is a really good episode um but this volume's been like top tier ruby like peak ruby like again i, I don't think i've really talked about this uh much i think i might have mentioned that i was just enjoying it but let's be honest this has been top tier ruby and apparently uh i heard that when monty was originally scripting out all of the seasons this was one that he was actually one of the most excited for and it's like that's I, I can see why it's so creative so interesting so dark but in a good way i do feel that ruby's going to come out herself obviously and i feel like she's going to be stronger like this is going to have been a massive heavy horrible trial for her but she's going to come out stronger than ever and be the huntress that she was always meant to be like I, I do think that that's where this is going for her that this was just a huge valid stumbling block for her but that she is going to overcome it um but it's going to be really cool to see how this ends because again we were given a little bit of a uh, expectations set by barb with her saying it's like one of her favorite episodes one of her like top five episodes of the series um i'm definitely when, when this volume ends i'm definitely going to be ranking the episodes i'm also going to probably make an updated like uh moments list because i've done like uh my favorite moments of uh the series based on past volumes so i, I might make another one of those We'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see where, where it goes and what I think. Um, but yeah, it's like... 
if the cat is right, this is going to be the last thing. If the cat is right, and like Neo can't return either because of having no attachments, then that's not going to change. Neo is definitely going to either die or just stay in the Ever After or get ascended or something like that. Um, we don't know exactly where it's going to go, but it, it's I, I, I don't see her ever making it back to Remnant. And I don't see... I, I don't really see her changing at all. Like I said before, I don't see a redemption arc for her at all. I just... I think this is the end of Neo as a character. For this series. Um, I think I think this is just where we're going to leave off with her. Apparently there's a book that uh, talks more about her past and everything. I had been like saying before like I thought like she was that we were gonna reveal her past in this but apparently a book has already done that and those photos those family photos and all we saw in the last episode were from that I guess. Um, I, I have not read any of the books so just letting you know that. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's about time, too. Neo, Neo's at that point where there's really not much of anything else they can do with her. So, I, I think that getting rid of her here would be the right decision. We'll see. We'll see. Um, in the meantime, though, tell me in the comments below... Uh, tell me what you thought of this episode of Ruby, Volume 9. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.